ladies and gentlemen, Eric Malcolm and Ernie Wise. <laughs> Fantastic. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. To use the words of the famous pianist, Sam Prini, who always says, we have something old, and here he is. I love it. Um, you are, Ern, are you? Yes. Just checking up. Um, what would you say... No, look, look, don't you think you should say hello to the ladies and gentlemen in the audience? Oh, sorry. I yeah. mean, they are our bread and butter. And one or two crusty cubs out there tonight. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why do you keep coming? That's what I want to know. Why do you keep coming? Um, yeah. <laughs> who, in your opinion, is the worst businessman in the world? No question about it. You are. Yes. And what would your opinion be of a young chappie who pays fifty pounds for an article worth at least one thousand pounds? I would say that he was shrewd, devious, sly, not to be trusted, and could well be another me. <laughs> then shake hands with another you. Something to do with that picture you're holding? I paid 50 pounds for this picture, mm. and it's worth at least 1,000 pounds. What is it? What is it? Yeah. Only, only a Jasper Rollins, that's all. <laughs> a Jasper Rollins? Is that good? Is that good? It was an FRA. Of course, his wife didn't know. <laughs> Has he exhibited anything? Three years ago, but they cured him now. <laughs> oh, yes, completely cured. He used to hang his works on the railings at High Park. Oh, yes. <laughs> you couldn't miss him. Yeah. Little man with a red face and bulging eyes. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all gems, these, gems, you know. Yes. Yes. And that picture you're holding, that's one of his paintings. Worth £1,000. Let's have a look at it. Pardon? <laughs> oh, I see, yes, you are now looking. You are now looking at a portrait of Lady Feltham. Commissioned? In 1885, by Lord Feltham of Feltham Hall, Feltham on the Hill. <laughs> Feltham Hall, Feltham on the Hill. And various other places, I'm told, as well. <laughs> Where did you find it? In a knick-knack shop. <laughs> a knick-knack shop? Yeah. If you ever need a new knick or a replacement knack, it's the shop. <laughs> and that's where you got the painting from? Well, the old gentleman who owns the shop said to me, I'd like to show you something in the back room. <laughs> and did he? He said, prepare yourself for a treat, young sir. Mm. And I couldn't believe my glasses <laughs> when he whipped the sheet off and revealed his Jasper Rollins. <laughs> How's that for a Jasper, he said. <laughs> and no bubbles. <laughs> no. He meant it. Well, how do you know it's worth a thousand pounds? Because I only rang up the most famous auction rooms in the world. Oh, yeah? The one where they sold the violin for 800,000 pounds, that's all. 800,000 pounds for a violin? Well, of course, it was a Stanley Various. Oh. <laughs> and why is that painted so valuable? Ah! <laughs> it's the story behind it. Go on. Well, the woman you see in this picture is, in fact, the ninth, the ninth Lady Felton. And Lord Feltham commissioned this picture to celebrate the arrival of the 24th child. 24 children? All girls. He wanted a boy. <laughs> An heir. An oxygen tank by the time he finished. <laughs> An oxygen <laughs> tank. <laughs> <laughs> How old was he? 84. And Lady Feltham? 19. <laughs> what happened? Not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> The story was that in 1848, Lord Feltham wanted to go on the Grand Tour. Mm -hmm. She said, no, just drink your milk and have an early night. <laughs> Quite a story. Oh, that's only the half. Yeah. While sitting for this picture that you see here... She fell in love with the artist. She realised that Jasper was in love with her, but she was that rare bird. A lady of honour. Do you know the story? No. Have you got a Jasper? No. Well, shut up. Oh. <laughs> She was posing for him. While she was posing, she said to him, Sir, I care not for this association. Let me have my frock back. A lady of honour? Indeed. She said, I am a lady of honour. I will hide from your passion. And if you can't find me, I'll be in the greenhouse. <laughs> and did he find her? He rushed after her into the greenhouse without thinking and had rather a nasty accident with one of those tropical plants that trap flies. <laughs> Just a quick snap every now and again. <laughs> but she would have no part of his love because she was a lady of honour. Absolutely. 
When she saw how he felt, she didn't hesitate. She rebuffed his inclination. With a sheet of sandpaper. <laughs> Which wasn't very pleasant. He was heartbroken. Shattered. What did he do? What would any man do in his position? There was only one thing he could do. He ostracized himself. Mm. And there was no national health in those days either. <laughs> that is a fascinating story. I'll give you a hundred pounds for that picture. Good night. No, wait. Is it genuine? Genuine? Mm. I'm no mug when it comes to art and antiques, sir. Who was it who proved that Arthur Negus was made in Japan? That's true. <laughs> there you are. You can see, you can see the Jasper Rowley's signature. Let's have a look. You're right. I ju How old is this picture? Experts say over a century, but my opinion is over a hundred years old. Really? Oh, yeah. You're not dealing with a mug, I keep no, telling you. No, I that. Uh, the paint's taking an awful long time to dry. Hmm? What? What? The paint. Hey, what? Yeah. Dry? A long yeah. time? What are you talking about, you comical little man? Look, I... I'm rubbing it, and the paint's coming off. Hey! <laughs> Wait a minute. What? What? Uh-huh. This isn't a Jasper Rowling. <laughs> There's another painting underneath. It says, Rembrandt. Good God, I've been done again. <laughs> Not now, Arthur. <laughs> I'm ripping my Rembrandt. <laughs> Not that. Good morning, sir. She's talking to you. Oh, good morning. Can I help you? I'd like a word with the manager, please. I am the manager, sir. I see. And what time will you be back? <laughs> sir? Oh, sorry, I thought you'd gone to lunch. Don't fool about. Oh, shut up. He's only little. I couldn't see him behind the counter anyway. What can I do for you? Do you repair bicycle frames? This is a jeweler's shop. Oh, is it? Oh, well, it is a beautiful shop. Thank you, sir. I notice over your shop door that you have a lion and the words by appointment written in gold underneath. I'm proud to say that we do, sir. Well, if it's good enough for Des O'Connor, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? Yes. In this jeweler's shop, do you by any chance sell diamond rings? No, only the very best, sir. That's what I want for her. Only the best. What did you have in mind, sir? Well, it depends on how she feels when we get home. <laughs> what sort of a diamond did you have in mind? Oh, you have a diamond ring in the window on a velvet pad, priced £3,500. We do indeed, sir. Now, I'm not an expert, but that seems rather a lot for a velvet pad. <laughs> no, that's the price of the ring. Ah. £3,500 is the price of the ring. It's a magnificent stone. I only want the best for him. She is a beautiful woman. <laughs> Shall I take it out so you can have a look at it? <laughs> well, there's not many in the shop, sweetheart. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Would you like to have a look at the diamond ring? Oh! Oh, well, um, y yes. I mean, if there's a rush on, we could call back. No rush on at the moment, sir. I'll get it for you. Is it for madam? No, it's for her. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I'll fetch it out of the window. Shan't keep you a minute. Nice man. Pardon? Nice man. Oh, yes, he is, yes. He's a QC. QC? Queer as a coot. Here we are, sir. Oh, he's back again. This is one of the finest stones we've ever had. Madam? It's beautiful. Try it on. May I? Please do. It's a bit too small. It won't go over my finger. We could have it made larger. Excuse me, uh, could you tell me one thing? Yeah? How, how can you make her finger larger? <laughs> we make the ring larger. Oh, because I was going to say, if you can make the finger larger, I've got a little job that wants doing well, it. Well, madam... Just down and <laughs> Just a quick word here and there. Oh, you never know your luck. It really is gorgeous. <laughs> well, do you want it? Oh, it's so terribly expensive. Oh, shut up. Yes or no? Oh, yes. Wrap it up and we'll take it. How much did you say it was? Three and a half thousand pounds, sir. Will you take a check? Certainly, sir. Good. Vladimir? Dobre den. Here's your check. All the way from Prague is yours. Good day. <laughs> Once again, it's time for what many people regard as not only the highlight of the show, but the highlight of the week. Hello. <laughs> um, Ernie Wise. Excuse me. Highlight. Yes. <laughs> Introducing the guest singer. Doing it now. Got anybody decent for a change? Lindsay DePaul. Lindsay DePaul. Coming on now. You clog dancers, you don't have to stick together, don't you? <laughs> 
as he isn't a clog dancer. Well, get him on and let's see what he can do. Ladies and gentlemen, the singer who put the heart back into chart, Lindsay DePaul. Lindsay. It's a girl. Well, I try. Oh, I told you, Eric. Lindsay DePaul. I see. Well, if you don't mind me asking, what's the D for? What's the D for? Well, she doesn't know, so I'll ask you one. <laughs> D. E. It's French. I didn't realize that, Miss DePaul. I didn't realize you were French. Por favor. Adios. <laughs> Quanta la gusta. You're bilingual, Eric. Yeah, so you uh, either hand, so watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, we know just how popular you are as a lady singer from the number of wonderful records you've made and sold. Thank you. I was astonished to read that you've sold almost half as many records as me. Uh, your records sell? Sell, of course. Snapped up like hotcakes at Garden Fates. <laughs> Six for two and a half P. <laughs> you buy 12 and they give you goldfish. Not a dead one, of course. Not in front of our guests, please. I'm sorry about that, Miss Depart. <laughs> One of these days you'll get somebody's name right. And what are you going to sing for us, Miss Deport? It's DePaul. Deport. The song is called Let's Boogie. I I'll give the music to Dennis Wilson. Oh, don't, for whatever you do, don't give it to him. Why? If he has to use more than two fingers, you're in dead trouble, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Actually, I accompany myself. Oh, good. Well, will the two of you go over to the piano and sing? <laughs> oh, please take half and not now. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay and Mr. DePaul are going to sing together. I used to read it in my paperback books. I had imagination, but not the looks. I never knew what I had missed. But they never said head that it would be like this. I used to watch it in the picture show. And then I dream about that movie case But they never say ahead that it would be like this Let's boogie, 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 boogie They never said that it would be like this Let's boogie, 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 boogie Boogieing's the only thing I can't resist faces and the hair all in curls and then I'd make my own analysis but they never say ahead that it would be like this let's boogie 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 they never said that it would be like this let's boogie 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 boogieing the only thing I care to resist
The Ernie Wise players now proudly present a play concerned with intrigue and espionage in the world of big business. The play was found lying on the steps of Broadcasting House and was adopted for radio. <laughs> Anne Hamilton appears by kind permission of the three-minute car wash in Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> Our thanks to Mr. Pemberton for allowing her the time off. Ladies and gentlemen, a play what Ernie Wise wrote himself. <laughs> entitled, The Spy with the Cold Nose. Archie, Archie, I must talk to you. I just can't go on living like this any longer. I can't talk to you now. I must study these very important business documents. They'll make me a nice little packet. All you're concerned about is money, money, money. Why? You're already a millionaire. No, Matt, no. Not. Not anymore. Are you trying to tell me that you've lost everything? <laughs> Almost everything. But I thought the business was doing so well. And so it was until I became the victim of industrial espionage. Someone has been stealing my business secrets from this very house. A spy in this house? Who can it be? Come in. Leave it all. <laughs> Percy the gardener here. Sorry, I'm late, only I think I've overdone it with the fertilizer. <laughs> There's a 19-foot cucumber lying in the front drive. <laughs> and I'm sorry about the plastic gnome and the rockery, sir. Plastic gnome? I was repainting his left leg before I realized it was your mother-in-law. <laughs> Just what you want, Percy. Uh, if you've got a minute to spare, could you come and have a look at me bulbs, please? <laughs> have a look at your bulbs. Yes, before I press them into the warm earth with me dibble. <laughs> I've got something to tell you about my husband. Oh, I know. I've seen his legs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll spray him first thing tomorrow morning. <laughs> the man's a fool! Percy, this is very serious. My husband has lost everything. <laughs> Does it matter? <laughs> he didn't use it much when he had it. <laughs> I mean, that is the talk in the village, you know. <laughs> I'm ruined! It's your own fault for lifting things that are too heavy for you. <laughs> You'll have ankles like turnips in the morning. All I want is my lovely money back. All you think about are these business papers. Yes, could you just hold them still a minute, please? I can't quite focus my camera. That's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, you must realize, Madge, you only take out what you put in. That's a good title for a song. <laughs> could, could, you, uh, <laughs> could you hold the documents nearer the light, otherwise the photograph will be blurred? That's lovely. Thank you all. Oh, you're so kind. Archie, look at Percy. That's an even better title for a song. <laughs> What are you doing with that camera? Uh, camera, camera uh, what camera, sir? That camera in your hand there. The one you've been taking pictures of these documents with. Archie, how long have you been losing your business secrets now? Six weeks. Percy, mm -hmm. how long have you been with us? Six weeks. <laughs> I see it all now. Oh, can we change places? <laughs> I must say, in a great play, this. You like it? Oh, well. Full of suspense, a worthy of Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock? I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> it, could. <laughs> it could be the run of beans, you yeah. never know. There's your industrial spy, Archie. I am but a simple gardener. The funny crudder of the compost heap. We haven't questioned Mrs. Young, the cook. Oh, but she's been with me ever since I was born. Oh, because she'd been here for 75 years, didn't mean a thing. I'll call her. Mrs. Young, will you come in here, please? Mrs. Young, where were you at two o'clock this afternoon? Um, I was in the kitchen, madam. You should have been in the potting shed with me, you promised. <laughs> Out with it. Pardon? <laughs> I think they're both in it together. Stay alone with me for five minutes. I'll find the truth. Why are they talking like that? <laughs> I don't know. This way, Mrs. Young, I want to talk to you about the whistles we had last night. Pardon? Exactly. This way. <laughs> Percy, come and sit next to me on the settee. Yes, ma'am. I don't think I've ever seen you without your wheelbarrow. <laughs> Not many people have. Sit down, Percy. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> That's nice. Percy, you've gone all red. Yes, it's my secateurs. <laughs> <laughs> they're, uh, they're in my back pocket, you know. Help! <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have moved them. I like you, Percy. Oh, really? Do you know which part of you I like the most? How many guesses? <laughs> I mean, with luck, I might get it right first time. Your ears. Oh. I like your ears. We had a pair of ashtrays like them once. <laughs> Look at me, Percy. Look at you what? <laughs> oh, I see, yes. <laughs> Lovely hands. Lovely hands. So soft and delicate. Thank you. No, I meant mine. <laughs> Isn't there something that you want to tell me? I'll be stringing my onions after tea, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> No, that wasn't what I meant. Why don't you... Why don't you put your arms around me? That's very kind. Well, Percy... I think the plums will be earlier than we thought this year, Mum. <laughs> you can stop all this pretending. Thanks. I know you're the industrial spy, and you must be a millionaire with all the business secrets you've stolen from Archie. I love millionaires. Take me away with you. I can't, because I'm not the spy. How can you prove that? I'll show you. Pretend that we finished our conversation and that we're both leaving. <clears throat> I'm going now, Mom. I must feed the tomatoes. It's egg and chips today for them. <laughs> Very well, Percy. I must go now. <laughs> I have shopping to do in the village. Right. I shut the door and hide behind this crocus. <laughs> you watch. Any second now. Quickly. They've gone, Mrs. Young. I mean, Polly. Where are the secret papers? It's a secret. <laughs> ah, here they are. Take the photos, quick. Pass me brownie. I won this in 1939 for sending in a jolly wheeze to the wizard. <laughs> Could have had a bite, but they take rotten pictures. Never mind how you got it. Take the pictures. I don't understand. What's happening? Keep your voice down! <laughs> you fool, we don't want to be discovered. We don't want them to know that we are both ensconced behind this crocus. It's a good job there's nobody about, Polly. He's a fool. He irritates me. That <laughs> All that lovely money in your name. We'll run away together. Somewhere exotic. You name it. Tahiti. Yes, I've never been to Wales. <laughs> All that lovely money. You see, it's your husband who's the spy. What? Don't come out from behind the crocus. He'll see you. Archie. Madge! Percy! Polly! Archie! Percy! Tarzan! <laughs> Tarzan? Sorry, Archie! Madge! Polly! Percy! I'm Inspector Crump! <gasps> Archie! Madge! Percy. Polly! Archie! Crump! Percy! <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Sir Jeremy Buttersby! Who? Who? Well, does it matter at this late stage? <laughs> Percy! Crump! For some time now, we've had a member of Special Branch working here in your home. Well done. You're a credit to the force. Thank you, sir. You mean that you aren't Percy the gardener? No. Then you're not a gardener. That's true. Then who are you? I am. I am Policewoman Audrey Buffkey. <laughs> in order to deceive you, I removed my policeman's helmet and one or two other bits and pieces that might have given me away. <laughs> Archie! Madge! Polly! Archie! Crump! Audrey! Cheeky! <laughs> Good audience. I'll feed them up. I'll let them have a complete rest for a month and they'll be able to mix with normal people again. <laughs> I enjoyed doing it. I miss that. I was doing a radio show. I love doing radio. Yeah, well, the beauty of it is you don't have to shave. You can be more casual on radio. I must admit, it's the first time I've ever worked with no clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners at home didn't notice much. Wouldn't notice much here, either, would it? <laughs> Are we on next week? No, I'm told they're going back to comedy. Oh. <laughs> well, shall we do the song? Well, better out than in, I always say. <laughs> I will find 
find you, don't care where. Look behind you, I'll be there, following you around. Rain or shine, you won't shake me, I don't mind. Where you take me, spend my time, following you around. We get along so easily, don't you agree? We like each other's company, don't you agree? Cause we're birds of a feather, in every degree, don't you agree? Don't you agree? Not now, Arthur, for peace. Bring me sunshine in your smile. Bring me laughter all the while. In this world where we live, there should be more happiness. So much joy you can give to each brand new bright tomorrow. Make me happy. Through the years, never bring me any tears. Let your arms be as warm as the sun from up above. Bring me fun, bring me sunshine, bring me love. You've been listening to the Eric Morkham and Ernie Wise Show with Anne Hamilton, Gay Soper, Arthur Tulcher and me. Their singing guest today was Lindsay DePaul. The music was supplied by Dennis Wilson and his orchestra and the script was written by Eddie Braben. <laughs> Not now, Arthur. And take my frock off. <laughs> the Morkham and Wise Show is produced by John Brown.